Hey, how's it going? My name is Tushar Imdad. I'm a high performance coach and I specialize in Islamic time management. And now I'm in the, the Miracle Morning community uh, where I'm with thousands of other uh, people from different faiths around the world uh, and we're all striving to get a great morning routine. And um, I, a question I get asked quite a bit is um, one, of the, one of the routines uh, is meditation in the morning. And so I often get asked, well, you know, how, how, do, you, how do Muslims meditate? So I've created a short video uh, to, uh, and if there are any Muslims watching, you know, you're going to find this uh, useful as well because it's going to go maybe in a bit more depth and will give you some understanding as well. Uh, but this is primarily for, for, for non-Muslims um, to help you understand uh, how the Muslim prayer works. I'm just going to give you a breakdown of one unit of prayer um, and, and, uh, and, and explain how this helps our uh, meditation, basically, right? Um, so the first thing we do before we even start to pray right and so as you know muslims pray five times a day and these are the five and so i'm talking about you know practicing muslims uh you know who, who take religion seriously they pray five times a day and uh the way that you know the kind of proportion of muslims who pray five times a day i i guess you could compare it to the proportion of christians who go to the church every sunday right so uh, nearly every muslim goes uh, on to our our kind of you know, they come to our Sabbath, and we call it Jum'ah on Friday, the Friday prayer, nearly all Muslims go to that, right? But the serious Muslims, they'll pray five times a day as well, right? So now, um, for, the, for the morning routine, for, you know, the, a miracle morning routine for a Muslim, which I call a Mubarak morning routine, um, we would do something, this would be an optional prayer, right? So we would have the dawn prayer at Fajr, so it could be that, but I'm talking about extra prayer. So on top of the five prayers, Muslims... Serious Muslims who want to have a nice morning routine will do an extra prayer. Now, these prayers which we do, they take about five minutes each, right? And they consist of units, um, uh, which I'm going to explain to you in a minute. Before we even pray, a Muslim has to do something called a ritual ablution. So I'm not showing that in this video, but this is where we would you know, go to a bathroom and we would actually ritually wash. We'd wash our, um, you know, our hands, uh, our face, we'd uh, gargle our mouth, wash our, uh, uh, you know, rub our, uh, our head with water, and even wash our feet, right? You might have walked into a Muslim in the service station or something and he's washing his feet. That's part of his ablution, you'd say, the technical English word, or wudu in Arabic. And now the interesting thing about this is that, you know, one of the recommendations uh, uh, when you wake up in the morning, um, if you want to have a miracle morning, is, is you know, it's like kind of water therapy, hydration, right? One drinking water, but also splashing water in the face. And so, we do this even before we pray, right? So that's the first thing we do. We do our ablutions, and, and you know, so that we, if we don't have a, a state of ritual ablution, our prayer doesn't even count. So we, we, we do that first, right? So that gets us in a, in a physical and spiritual readiness to pray, right? And Muslims listening to this, you know, you know, when, when, I, when, when we talk about it like that, it's like, oh, it just becomes a ritual, and we forget that, wow, this, this ablution we're doing is getting us ready to be in a state of prayer. Okay, then the next thing we do, and now this is optional, but um, we can actually dress for prayer, right? So... Uh, you can just dress like normally here. Yeah, I'm just in my slacks, you know, I've just got a t-shirt and trackies on. But um, it's recommended, you know, just like you have your Sunday best when you go to church. So Muslims, when they go to the mosque, they're encouraging the Quran to adorn themselves with the best of, uh, best of clothes. And so it's recommended to cover your arms, to, you know, to, to look smart. So I have, this is just like a kind of tailor made, just like a, like a prayer outfit, like a prayer jacket to put on. It's recommended to cover the head because we're, you know, when we pray, the idea that we're standing before God, right? And so this is just like a little prayer outfit I have. Women, you'll notice they have their own prayer outfits where they cover their head, etc. right? And then we just get started. And so now the first thing we do before we start, um, we, um, you know, we make uh, an intention. So we say, oh God, oh Allah, I'm now going to pray, you know, two units of prayer to please you. Please accept this, right? Um, and then we open it by a movement which is called the takbir. And you might have heard, you know, see this in the news, Allah, Akbar, Allah, Allah, Allah. Where does that phrase come from? In the prayer. Each phase of the prayer, we signal the, the shift by saying, Allahu Akbar. And when we say Allahu Akbar, that means that it, the prayer has actually started, right? And it means God is the greatest, right? So this is how we start. Um, the next movement we say, so then we, we say that. Now, the interesting thing about the, the Muslim prayer and the Muslim meditation, if you like, right, is that our prayer combines uh, body, mind, and soul. It's not just a meditation. It's not just silent. We're actually using our body and um, we have to use our intellect as well in the sense that the prayer has to be in Arabic. And now, you know, I think, what is it, 70, 80 percent of the Muslim world are non-Arabs. So we all have to learn Arabic from a young age, a bit like, you know, how, how Jews might learn Hebrew or, you know, Catholics might learn Latin in the past. And, um, and so we, we, the whole prayer has to be done in Arabic. And so the first thing we say 
And um, now obviously, if I wasn't demonstrating this, I would be, this is literally how it would be. If I, if I wasn't, uh, uh, if I wasn't demonstrating this video, it would be just like this. It would be like, Allahu Akbar, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Malik Yawm and I'll carry on like this, right? So I'm, I'm just breaking it down for you. And, and, you know, if you want to see the full prayer, you know, you can find that anywhere on, on, on you know, YouTube, right? So the first thing we say, right, and every Muslim says this in every unit of prayer, right? And just, you know, we will say, uh, it's something called a Fatiha, right? Fatiha means opening. It's an opening verse of the Quran, a, a beautiful uh, surah, a beautiful chapter of the Quran. And the Fatiha um, uh, literally means opening. And it's, a, it's the equivalent, you could say, of the Lord's Prayer, right, in, in Christianity. And, and, a, and a, loose, a loose translation, if I was to say it in English, all praise be to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the most compassionate, the most merciful, master of the day of judgment. You alone do we worship. You alone do we ask for help. Show us a straight path. The path of those whom you have guided and blessed, not the path of those who've earned your wrath, nor those who go straight. That's a loose English translation, but we're saying this in Arabic, right? And then after that, we recite another chapter of the Quran. And the Quran has 114 chapters, but the chapters towards the end are much shorter. So typically, we tend to do a shorter chapter, right? So a, a very short chapter, which is very famous, is called Surah Ikhlas. And that is something like, you know, um, and, and this is another thing about the prayer, by the way. It's very moving. It's musical. Right, so if I was doing this by myself, be like, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Qul hu Allahu ahad, Allahu samad, lam yalid wa lam yulad, wa lam yakul lahu kufuwan ahad. Right, and that means, say he is Allah, the one and only, Allah, the eternal, the absolute, uh, he begets not, nor was he begotten, and there's none comparable to him. Right, so we're saying, so there's profound meanings in what we're saying. Right, there's another one about, I mean, I'm a time management, I can't, I can't help telling you, like, there's another very short uh, chapter which Muslims like to say in the prayer, it's called Time, it's actually called uh, uh, Time, right? Wal Asr, inna l-insana lafi khus, illa al-ladhina amanu wa'amilu s-salihati wa tawasaw bil-haqqi wa tawasaw bil-sab. That literally means, and I've written like an e-book about this if you're interested, let me know in the comments, you know, by time. God swearing by time. Um, indeed, man is in a state of loss, except uh, the, the one who believes and um, does righteous deeds and joins others to truth and joins others to patience. Right? So it's a very profound and there's whole you know uh, volumes of uh, commentary on, on these uh, verses. So imagine when we're praying, it's not just we're just standing there. We're re re reciting verses of the Quran. It's me me it's melodic, right? It's, it's melodious. Um, and even if many Muslims don't even understand Arabic, but they love the melody, they love the the music of the Quran, right? So there's a kind of music therapy going on. We're reciting it's like Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. Right? So it's very moving. And so when we when we pray, we can we can pray and recite like that, right? So we do that, and that literally takes just a couple a minute or so, and then we go on to the next phase. Allahu Akbar, and then we move on to this is called ruku or the um, you know, the bowing. And so there's bowing, we, and, and we have some formulas, remember, to say, like, you know, Subhana Rabbi Lazim, which means, you know, exalted be Allah the Great, exalted be Allah, we say that three times. Sami Allah Liman Hamida, which means that Allah hears the one who praises him. Rabbana Lakal Hamd, which means, um, uh, our Lord, you are the one who deserves praise. Now notice in these movements, I want to do some links here to Tai Chi, right? Um, if, uh, and again, this is a very, you know, those of you who have learned some Tai Chi, I had a Tai Chi uh, master, who um, actually trained with Earl Montague, one of the great Tai Chi masters, and he passed away recently. And he was, prof you know, he he, he, was, he was a Muslim actually, but he, he's a Muslim, and he uh, but he wasn't like a practicing Muslim. And Tai Chi actually helped him turn to Islam a bit more because he realized, with astonishment, when he was learning from Earl, Earl Montague, like a grand master of Tai Chi, that a lot, like all the movements of Salah, all the movements of this prayer, the Muslim prayer, is linked to amazing chi flow kind of forms in Tai Chi. So, you know, even this opening sequence, um, you know, this movement into this position, and then later when we go to prostrate, uh, uh, and later I want to show you uh, uh, the, the prayer position, they all have links uh, to Tai Chi positions, which basically induce energy flow. So every position of the prayer is actually, you know, good for your uh, internal energy or chi flow, if you like, right? So there's, there's kind of, uh, there's those phys physiological and spiritual benefits uh, in that sense as well. Okay, so let me show you that. So we start like that. We 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 after we recite the Quran, we go into the um, uh, the, the bowing position, uh, standing again, 
And then we say, Allah, but then we now we go into prostration. So we go into prostration, Allah, Akbar, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, Subhanahu Now, when we prostrate, the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, bless him, has uh, taught uh, Muslims that when you are, you are closest to your Lord, you know, metaphorically, obviously, you're closest to your Lord in, uh, in, in the prostration, right? So and if you think about it, the prostration is a, an extremely humbling uh, pose, right? And, uh, you know, and I'm not saying this to proselytize or anything, but just to give you an example, one, one Christian convert I met, I met um, he, he said that he used to read in the Bible of prophets prostrating, you know, that, that, you know and, uh, and, his, uh, and how they would you know, fall prostrate to their Lord. And, he, and, and then he saw a news item of the Hajj or something, and he's like, hey, these Muslims are the only ones who actually prostrate. You know, he found that profound. It's, it's one of the things that helped him convert. So I, I, I'm just saying that as a point of interest, that prostration, is something which the prophets, even in the Bible, you might find that they uh, that they go prostrate. So it's a very beautiful um, position because this is, as a Muslim, we submit to God, and and prostration is our ultimate uh, kind of sign and symbol physically that we're submitting to God. So into submission, Subhanallah. So we do that twice, and that is basically one unit, right? So I've just shown one unit to you, and then we'll get up again, and then we will repeat basically, right? And so that one unit, I was kind of you know, talking all the way through it, but you could do that in one minute, really, right? And, and Muslims can pray faster with Alhamdulillah. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, uh, but obviously, if we're doing it in a morning routine, we'd be encouraged to do it slowly. And, 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 and the Prophet Muhammad, actually, peace be upon him, he would even recite the long verses of the Quran, such as his devotion, like the second verse of the the second sorry, uh, surah of the Quran, second chapter of the Quran is called the Surah Baqarah, the, 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 uh, and, and that surah is really long. It would take like it might take an hour to finish it, right? And so he would stand in prayer for a long time. So that is like super advanced for the mystics and saints. But, you know, we do that. And now this is, I want to finish on this interesting point that when we finish, right? So we finish, so we finish by prostrating. And then after two cycles of prayer, we will stay in this kneeling position. And then the way the Muslims finish uh, their prayer, they'll say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, which means peace be upon you. And, that, and you might have heard that, Assalamu alaikum, right? That means peace be upon you. It's a prayer, a peace be upon you. So we say, Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah, peace and the mercy of God be upon you, uh, which is the right, and Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh, and peace and, and mercy of, and blessings of Allah upon you. Where the Muslims, what they intend when they do that is that they are uh, uh, sending peace upon anyone who's on their right in the world, and anyone to their left in the world, including the angels, the seen and the unseen. So that's the kind of communion with everyone. Um, and I've not even told you like the different formulas uh, we recite here, but um, that's going to make this video too long. Um, and then we're finished. Now, after we finish, this is when, uh, traditionally, this is the time when Muslims will pray. Um, and again, this, you know, this movement going to the right and to the left are, gone, are classical Tai Chi uh, movements. And by the way, there's no kind of, there's no evidence of any connection between the Tai Chi masters and the Muslims, which, you know, which I've ever heard of. So it's quite, it's a, it's a remarkable divine coincidence that these movements are similar in these two traditions. Um, and then when we make the prayer, again, the prayer in Islam, now, you know, in Christianity, you know, you, have, you, you put your, your, your hands together. The, the, the prayer position for Muslims is that we, uh, we use our, our hands like this. And again, this is another famous Tai Chi position. There's one, um, and you can pray like this, sitting down. And sometimes the Prophet Muhammad would even, uh, you know, uh, sometimes if he wanted to be more intense in his prayer, he might raise his hands even higher, right? For example, praying for rain. And sometimes they'll be standing, right, and praying. And this, this position, again... Um, uh, is, is, is uh, you know again in, in, in some texts I think I believe in biblical or Jewish texts said that Moses again my Tai Chi teacher told me this you have to check the reference but like Moses you know in, 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 in one of the battles you know he, his hands would be raised like this for a long time this is actually a Tai Chi position that you keep your hands raised um, and, and you stay still like this for ages any any practitioner of Tai Chi will, will, will be familiar with it. this is exactly like the Muslim prayer position when we're really really uh, uh, praying to God and I encourage people of any faith watching this. When you pray to God, try this, try this position. It's, it's a very profound, open position. And it's like you're calling to God. It's like you're asking, you're bringing the energy. Right? I even saw a Tony Robbins uh, uh, demonstration when, and, you know, in, in between their different kind of, uh, you know, en energy kind of things. They're pushing up and in between they'll, they'll, they'll sit and they'll, you know, they'll sit like this on their chair. And then, you know, they'll just kind of feel the energy. And their hands are like this. This is also a kind of prayer position. All these positions, the hands basically upturned. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's, it's probably, there's probably a lot of scientific evidence. Muslims don't even need to look into that because we trust, you know, we know this was taught to us by Prophet Muhammad. But these positions are very profound and they, they help you uh, connect to God. This is a great, you know, it's a, it's a very natural, a physical posture to pray.
And so this final part, we will then pray to God, we will raise our hands and pray. And so part of our meditation will be to pray to God, to bless our day, to, um, uh, uh, you know, to, to help us, uh, to, to, you know, to, we pray for our parents, our family, our children, our community, the world, right? And, 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 and many devout Muslims do this every single day. Um, and then um, another part of the routine that often you'll see Muslims do after the prayer is that they'll make formula of remembrance. And often they'll have a, a, a misbaha or a tasbih, which is basically like a rosary. Um, you don't have to. Some Muslims prefer to use their hands. I, I like using a rosary. And, you know, you could, be, you could be sat on the prayer mat. You'll see Muslims in the masjid. Uh, they'll be doing it there. And typical uh, types of formulas of remembrance will be like, I stuck through a lot of stuff through like a formula of I, 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 Allah, forgive me, forgive me for my sins, to purify ourselves. Another one is Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, Allahumma salli ala And that would be a formula of, uh, oh Allah, bless Prophet Muhammad. And the classic one, the, the formula of faith of Islam, la ilaha illallah, which is, uh, which we believe to be the greatest statement in the cosmos, the greatest statement that can ever be uttered. There is no God uh, except Allah. There is no God worthy of worship except the one God, the, the, the creator and the Lord of the universe. And we, and we say this, right? And this is part of our meditation. We might be, you know, so I go on my morning walk and I'll be literally, la, 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 la. so if you ever see uh, a Muslim with uh, a rosary, you know, don't get worried, don't get scared. You know, Catholics do it as well sometimes, right? They're just doing their form of remembrance. And um, that's basically how Muslims meditate. So I hope this video was uh, useful for you. I hope that um, you gain benefit and that you've got a better and clearer understanding of how Muslims uh, pray. If you're a Muslim, I hope this is kind of because, you know, uh, Muslims, uh, uh, if you're a Muslim watching this, you know that sometimes when we pray, the biggest danger of our prayer, it becomes rote and it just becomes like something we just do out of habit and duty and we lose the life of it. So I hope this demonstration has reinvigorated you to kind of bring life back to your prayer. As a non-Muslim who's seeing this, I hope this has uh, satisfied your curiosity so you understand how our Muslim's meditation combines physical, spiritual, and mental. Um, and um, it, you know, it requires a whole body, um, but it, it has a lot of spiritual elements in it as well, right? And um, if there's any questions, please put it in the comments underneath. Uh, wherever you're hearing uh, this video, if it's whether it's on LinkedIn, uh, you know, you should be able to find a way to get in touch with me. Any questions, I'll be more than happy to, to try and assist. Um, and yeah, let's just spread the peace, spread the love, spread understanding between people of different faiths. We're in a time in the world where we really need to, uh, more peace and more uh, togetherness, more understanding, um, and so that we can all move forward together. So thank you very much. Peace be upon all of the listeners to this. Uh, may God bless you. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa